All right, looks like we are live. Got lots of people in the room here. Let's just make sure that we are in fact live. I'm going to go ahead and update the sticky message. So when you see it, please let us know uh, your role and organization. We'll wait for some response to come in. I see Energy Duck is with us, so is Tamara, and welcome Marianne. We'll wait for a couple more responses there. Here comes Jacobus and George. Just waiting for someone to respond and let us know their role in organization, and then I'll know we're live. Welcome, Steve. The suspense. Come on, surely someone has a role in the organization. There's Jacqueline from Stellenbosch and Tazmira and Raj. Good to have you, Raj. And Megan, come on, just waiting for roles and organizations. Then we know we love. There we go. Okay, thanks, Hans. That is confirmation. Good to have you all here this morning. So welcome. My name is John Dean, and I'm the CFO Community Manager for CFO South Africa. This morning, we've got a really, really interesting webinar with uh, our friends from Treasury One and Automation Anywhere. And we'll be running through a, a case study with one of their partners and clients, Renault South Africa. What interests me about this uh, webinar is that in the early stages of lockdown and when we first launched our webinar series, uh, Treasury Wine and Automation Anywhere were one of our, our first partners to jump on board. And the feedback we got after the session was uh, really incredible. Now, what makes this session a little bit different today is that as opposed to giving a sort of high-level overview or a generic um, kind of stance on RPA and automation, we're going to be talking through a real case live study uh, with Reno, and you're going to be hearing it from finance's perspective, which is going to be really cool. So please, at any point during today's session, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and type them in the chat. We'll be sure to answer as many of them as we can here today. And then any questions that we don't get around to answering this morning, uh, I'll follow up with Rudolph and the rest of the Renault team. We'll get some of those responses and we'll have them over to you in the next few days. We hosted the, the CFO Awards last night and uh, one of our presenters, Craig Wing, he mentioned something really interesting. And he said that in China, they've got this concept where if there is a job that a computer is capable of doing, it's actually disrespectful to, to give it to a human. And I think that really sets the tone for our webinar here this morning. So today we're going to be in conversation with Amanda and Glovu, who is the GM of Finance over at Reno. And Amanda, you're welcome to turn on your camera and say a quick hello to us. And then I'll go through everybody else. Hello, everybody. How's it? How are you this morning? Good and you, John? Yeah, good, thanks. And Christelle van der Waal, who works in accounts receivable over at Reno as well. Welcome, Christelle. Hi, John. Good to have you here. And then we've got Kubus, who is the VP of Finance. Welcome, Kubus. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. And we have Rudolf, uh, who's the CTO over at Treasury One and Automation Anyway. Welcome, Rudolf. Hey, how's it, John? Nice yeah. talking to you again. Likewise, likewise. So what's going to be really awesome is that um, we're going to be hearing some of the more broad and technical aspects and components from, from Rudolf. And then what I really love about this case study is that normally when there's an automation or an RPA project, it's normally something which is just sort of structured from the top down and this is what's happening and that's the end of the story. Where Renault took a very different approach. Um, Amanda and Christelle played a very big role in terms of what they wanted and what they needed from an RPA perspective. Um, and I have no doubt that you're going to find this incredibly interesting this morning. So Amanda, Crystal, and Quibus, I'm going to ask you to jump off camera for now. Uh, Rudolph, I'm going to go ahead and start your slides. And I know we also had a couple of poll questions. So what do you say we start with one of our poll questions now? And that is, is RPA on your finance strategic roadmap? Please go ahead and respond to the poll in the chat now. It's a simple, oh, I should probably press publish. That will help. There we go. You should see that over the chat now. Go ahead and respond to that, please. There we go. Seeing some responses come in. Can you see the, the results, Rudolf? No. Click, click on polls and you'll see them. Um, oh, yes, of course. That will help. Yeah. 
as soon as I see that sort of stabilizing, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Okay, wow. Okay, it seems to have stabilized somewhat. Okay, well, we'll give you another five seconds to go ahead and respond, and then I'm going to ask you for some of your, your thoughts and reflections. There we go. Yeah, I see it's about 70%. Yeah, um, okay. let's, let's go ahead and... Get... Okay, wait. Yeah. Last chance to respond. Uh, okay, here we go. Perfect. That's that's very interesting for, for all the finance professionals in the room wondering mm -hmm. where the, the last 1% went, and we're not quite sure ourselves, but um, <laughs> those are the results. What do you think about that, Rudolf? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's sort of what we're seeing in the market at the moment. Uh, I think there is a big drive almost everywhere. Uh, all the clients uh, prospects we talk to, there is a big drive, and it's, you know, it's getting sort of traction now where it's not – I think a lot of the misnomers initially of what it, what it is and what it's going to do has been sort of, you know, it's washed out and people realize that it, you know, it can transform you and make you better actually as a finance team. So yeah. not surprising. If it was okay. the other way around, I'd be surprised. But yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. We, we've got a couple of other uh, polls here as well. So let's uh, start another one. So are skilled resources holding you back from an RPA implementation? Please go ahead. Once again, and you can respond either yes or no, please let us know. Again, we'll leave that open for about 10 or 15 seconds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it got stuck there for a second. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing some interesting results. Oh, very evenly matched there. Okay, we'll give you, let's give it another five seconds and then we're going to go ahead and close that poll. All right, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and end that one as well. So again, Rudolf, we can see these are, yeah. are fairly tight responses. Your your thoughts there? Yes. <clears throat> again, it's, it's not, not that surprising. I think... It's about, I think currently in our, in our world, it's a bit more, I think, uh, sort of more than 60, 70%. Okay. So some of our clients just want us to sort of assist them in the beginning and then they want to take it over themselves. Okay. Other clients have no plans of ever taking it over and they just want to, want to give it to us to manage for them. So okay. yeah, it's more or less in line, but. Okay. Awesome. Cool. I know we've got a couple more, um, polls and I think what we'll do is we'll introduce those towards the the end of your discussion. Um, I know that you wanted to give us like a, a high level overview Rudolf of um, just uh, Treasury Wine and Automation Anywhere and obviously the, the RPA journey. So I'm going to start your slides and then I'm going to jump off camera Thank you. and um, hand over to you. Thanks. Thanks John. Yeah. So I I actually want to just get through my slides quite quickly. I just want to spend 10 minutes. <clears throat> Obviously, just want to tell everyone uh, about Treasury One Automation, who we are. Uh, then I'll just jump into what we try and achieve for finance departments. I'll give a quick overview of, of Automation Anywhere. And then I've actually got a slide that I think, well, I hope you would find interesting. It's, it's actually the way that we view uh, when we actually go and try and automate a process. Uh, the way we actually view it from a, from an automation point of view and the components involved in that, uh, just because what we found and and you'll you'll see as as we talk to the Renault team, uh, the more people we can educate specifically on the capabilities of of RPA and what it is able to do, um, the better ideas we generate within with within an organisation. Uh, and again, I'd just like to thank the the Renault team for joining us uh, today. I'll, talk about them a little bit. Um, so just Treasury One Automation. So I guess most important thing from our side is the fact that we implemented RPA within Treasury One first. So um, after, you know, we started sort of three and a half years ago. So from an RPA point of view, that's actually ages uh, in, in the South African market. But because we saw it transform our business and the way we work and all the benefits that, that we saw within, within RPA, uh, that's when we decided to actually uh, now deliver it as a service and as a product to to not only our existing clients but also um, companies that weren't our clients before. Um, two other things from our side: we are actually a certified uh, center of excellence accredited by Automation Anywhere, as far as I know, and I still 
stand to be proven wrong. We were actually the first company in Africa to receive that certification. Uh, we've we've automated well over 300 processes. Uh, and I guess from our side, but we also try and we make it a bit different is we we actually can provide it as a service. So that just makes the cost uh, predictability and the total cost of ownership uh, from your RPA service provider just uh, very predictable uh, and it actually helps a lot get the, get the project uh, across the board. Uh, but we also obviously offer your your typical direct license options. So just quickly on automation anywhere, and again, I'd like to thank them for you know for sponsoring us and supporting us as well as the, the CFO community. Um, but what they do uh, as a partner, and again, we sort of scoured the earth for what we thought would be the best uh, automation or RPA platform, and we came across automation anywhere. Uh, they've, they've been in existence for for about 15 years, actually 3,000 clients worldwide. I think there's 2 million bots in production or 2.5 million, uh, which is which is a crazy amount of, of bots that's actually uh, performing automations. But one of the biggest reasons we, we chose them is, is because it's a complete platform. So if I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes just explaining the platform itself. So the latest addition to the platform on your left-hand side is something that's called the discovery bot. So what the discovery bot does is actually uh, follows humans on their on their daily tasks. It actually records um, and their tasks, and then it actually sends those tasks as they would be automated to a sort of a central control room, where we as the the RPA engineers can then actually take a pre-configured process and then automate it from there. So that's a, a new process discovery tool that really just helps to speed up the process in terms of getting a task from identifying it as, a, as an automation candidate to actually getting it live into production. Uh, currently what we're picking up is about a 65% time save on that. Um, then we have the IQ bot. So I think one of the questions that was sent in, in advance is, is what do you do with, with illegible documentation or scan documents, et cetera? And Automation Anywhere has got a, got a great tool called the IQ bot, um, which actually takes scanned or unstructured information, typically in a, in a finance world, a scanned invoice, and then actually uses a sort of assisted machine learning uh, where we teach the bot actually how to read that document so we can extract the information and then process an invoice uh, after that. Um, then we have the Enterprise Edition, uh, and again, Quite interesting, not a lot of people know this about automation, but you have actually two types of automation. You have what is what we call uh, unattended automation, where essentially just you send an email to the bot to, to do something, it does it completely independently, and then it would just send you a notification once it has completed that process. Um, then we have something called attended automation. So these are typically processes we actually, we need a human in the loop. So we need a person that has to make a decision during um, during a process when you actually can't build all the logic into the bot. So it will, you know, the bot will start the task, it will run the first five or six steps, it'll actually come back to a human. Um, you answer the question or say yes, or, you know, accept or reject, whatever, reject, whatever the case might be, and then the process goes uh, from there. And then we actually, uh, on automation, we're anywhere have a bot insights platform for, for smart analytics. And that just gives you a cockpit overview of, of how your RPA program is performing and, and are the bots performing correctly, are there any errors, how to resolve them, uh, et cetera. Then this is what we actually try, and, and, and this is my, my version of, of uh, contributing to, to flattening the curve is actually what we try and achieve for finance partners. And I mean, as we work with our customers more and more closely, we just find that, uh, you know, finance departments, is, there's a constant never ending, um, you know, processes that going on. They have to prep for year end, then it's year end, um, then it's audits, then it's budgets, then it's sort of interim, internal audit. And, and if you look at that yellow baseline, that's actually where you wanna be. But you know, in reality, it, it, it just goes up and down like this. But what we do try and do with uh, achieve with automation is we try and take away all the mundane work uh, uh, from your from your finance team, and that actually allows you to use their skills and insights um, to work for maybe a longer period on budgets. So instead of you know having two weeks to complete budgets, we take away some of the some of the mundane work, and then actually can your whole finance team can focus on the budget cycle, but maybe run it for four weeks and spend a lot more time on a process, and, and, and that just produces a, a higher quality uh, of work. 
And as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm almost done. This is my this is my second last slide. The other one, last one, is just a context slide. But this is actually what we do when we, as as RPA engineers, look at a process from start to finish. And I and I always try and use the the easiest one to use is is, is a typical invoice processing. So we typically look for a trigger. So something has to trigger the bot to start a task. Um, then we typically have to extract information uh, from a database or a document and this is very important then we do validations and we actually incorporate your business rules into each process that we do and then once we're done with that we actually process the the transaction and when we look at a trigger and this is where i think people find it surprising i'm i'm sure the rental team will, will will share this with you a trigger can be scheduled so we can schedule a bot to run you know every 10 minutes every 30 minutes uh, nine o'clock on a monday morning uh, however it is required we can actually trigger the bot with an email so the bot manages its own email inbox and we can send them please uh you know uh, please run a please run report x um or please start this task or it's as simple as sending a specific invoice um to the bot and the bot can then look at the email see who it's from uh look at the attachment and then based on those things actually kick off a task on that side and uh, what we can also do is if if someone drops a file in a folder somewhere uh, the bot will continuously monitor or pull that folder and as soon as a file drops a, a specific task will kick off and then we have to figure out how to extract the information so we can extract information from from websites so the bot can log into the website uh, read a website download uh, download pages download documents from a website or web-based type of applications like I mentioned, the scan documents, again, this is where we, we use the IQ bot. So if it's a very uh, ugly scan document that we actually need to, to, to process, we can use the IQ bot to extract the information from there. And then we can very easily read information from, from Excel sheets and obviously also from, from PDF documents, which again in the finance world is very typical of how we receive invoices. Then very importantly, or sort of most important, we have to build all the business logic <clears throat> of your specific process into the task. So typically, when we when we look at invoice uh, invoice automation, we would receive uh, receive the invoice. We would make sure that it's from the supplier. We would make sure that that supplier is a valid supplier. Actually, looking back to our accounting system, if our purchase order number needs to appear on the invoice, we will extract that information and we will confirm against our accounting or ERP system whether that's a valid PO number that exists within our environment. We'll just do some consistency checks on the, on the VAT number and then we'll actually perform some recalculations. So typically, again, on an invoice, what we would do is we would extract all the line items, total it up, make sure it, 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 it totals back to the, to the grand total on the invoice. Uh, we can recalculate that, um, all sorts of things like that. And we can even look at pricing schedules. So if there's a specific line item or a price has been agreed uh, between yourself and a specific vendor, we can actually go and check, extract that price uh, for that specific line item on the invoice, go back to the accounting system, see whether that's within range of our agreed pricing with that specific vendor and then go to the processing from there. So once we've extracted the information, the task has been triggered and we followed all the business logic. And again, what you must remember from a bot, if you tell the bot to follow 10 business rules, it will always follow those 10 business rules. And it's not going to just do nine because the 10th one always seems to work and it just stops checking it. It always does that. And then we need to process the transaction. Again, this is where the software is very flexible. So again, we can go teach the bot how to log into your accounting system, navigate to the invoice processing screen, and then use the information that it extracted actually to capture the information into, into your accounting system. We can do that for web-based applications, your normal Windows type of applications. And then we can also get quite technical uh, by communicating to the back end um, of, of accounting systems, either through the database directly or just sending a file or doing your sort of more modern type of integration uh, using APIs. And what's great about the, the Automation Anywhere uh, platform is that uh, on our side, actually, there's more than 500 commands that we can actually pick and choose from uh, essentially a drop down menu on the left hand side and just drag and drop them onto a process, uh, onto sort of a process map. Um, to automate these sorts of tasks. And that's, again, I guess where all the flexibility comes in uh, with a tool like, like Automation Anywhere. And then if you use our experience and you have great clients, uh, 
who uh, can collaborate like like Reynold, that's actually quite a quite a big recipe for success. Uh, my last slide is just a context slide, so um, I'll be on the on the panel a bit later. Uh, I'm really excited to to hand over to to Kubis, um, uh, from Reynold. I just think you know from our side, and this is why we called it the, the sort of ultimate case study. I just think just in terms of collaboration. Um, the speed with which we went, um, the fact that there was, uh, you know, almost no, uh, you know, sort of pushback from from anywhere. Everything just went went smooth, and I think that will just test to the fact that the way that that, that the team works together quite well. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to hand over Kubis. Thanks for your for your time. Thanks, John. Thanks, Rudolf. Uh, I always find it so interesting. I remember when you and I sat down and we had a conversation around. Obviously, CFO South Africa being a very community-led organization, and there, there isn't much that we automate. And I walked you through some of the processes of how we're manually pulling spreadsheets and pulling information from the, the CRM system, and yeah. do it all manually so there, there aren't those kind of errors. But I remember you saying, you can just get a bot to do all of that, that stuff that you're doing. So, yeah, yeah. That's something we still need to chat about. Yeah. No problem. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks. Perfect, let's move on from here. Kobus, I'm going to invite you onto camera and let me go ahead and stop the slides as well. So, welcome and good morning again. Thanks, John. Yeah. Kobus, obviously, Reno is a, a very well recognized brand, well, across the world and certainly in South Africa. Um, and I just wondered, just to kind of set the tone and to give the audience a, a bit of an overview about your organization, perhaps you can just give us a little bit of background info on Reno, and then just tell us a little bit more about um, your role in VP of Finance over at Reno as well, please. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. So, uh, and good morning to all those uh, on the webinar. Um, Reno, the first Reno arrived in South Africa in 1953, so quite a piece of history. Um, but maybe more more recently, um, uh, in 2002, the then Imperial Holdings Group and Renault Group of France uh, created a joint venture in Renault South Africa. Uh, started uh, importing quite actively into into the local market. Um, today, post unbundling um, from Imperial, the Motors Group uh, owns the majority stake in Renault South Africa. Uh, so we're part of a of a large listed entity within South Africa, and that obviously gives us a, a fantastic network to to operate in. Uh, we have our head office for the importer business within in Bruma area. You know, I were joking earlier about uh, what you can remember of Bruma. Uh, we have our parts distribution center based in Spartan. There's about um, 100 people that work. Uh, for for the importer and then obviously we have a, a wonderful dealer network of about 85 dealers across southern africa including uh, south africa namibia botswana um, and then we you know if you if you see a reno regularly you you shouldn't be surprised um, we we sold more or less five percent of market share in the in the south african market even in in this COVID year so about 14,000 cars uh, up to the end of October. So we, we, we think we are a brand to be reckoned with, and we think our clients think so as well. So uh, that's that's a short history on, on Renault and Renault in South Africa. Awesome. Thanks. And tell us a little bit about um, your role and key responsibilities as well. So uh, VP Finance, um, uh, some of the titles have uh, come across from our French colleagues. So uh, they don't have um, they don't have a, a finance director. They've got a vice president. Uh, okay. The strange thing is our managing director is not the president. He is still the managing director. Uh, but uh, my role is really to to lead the finance team um, and and think strategically about how we can improve and uh, uh, better operate it in 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 our business on, from a finance perspective. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much, Corbus. Um, I think when, when Rudolf opened up his session, he mentioned something that uh, Treasury One were one of the first organizations to do a significant impl implementation of um, RPA or automation. So what convinced you to look at or explore automation with, within your team? How, how did you see that working? 
So um, one, one reads about these things and you're naturally um, a bit scared as to what does it mean and, 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 and can it work and what's the cost. And so, so initially it, it, it was a bit of a fact finding. Um, yeah. Rudolf, I say I, I, I take too long to sign contracts, but um, <laughs> that probably comes with the territory. So I, I think it was clear in my mind that we have a growing dealer network yeah. Uh, we, we don't have continuous ability to increase our headcount. And, and as a result, the, the volume of transactions and especially the, the repetitive transactions continue to increase. So we needed to find a way to be able to operate those um, very effectively and, and, and accurately and rather have the team look at anomalies and rather have them focus on uh, delivering to, to the requests of, of our clients and um, the dealership at large, as well as our internal clients. Okay. So that, that clearly was one of the drivers to, to try and look at something that, you know, gives you capacity without um, adding, adding headcount. Okay. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I think that that's the, um, I don't say justification, but that, that seems like a similar journey that, that most finance professionals share, that they want to free up their themselves or their team members so that they can focus on more sort of strategic or more analytical work. And like you said, looking at the insights or the data rather than performing these manual processes. So that makes sense. Now, a lot of organizations um, embarked on these RPA or automation journeys. What interested me about the, the Renault story was was just around the timing of when you guys did this, because it was like sort of right in the peak of, of lockdown or COVID, wasn't it, or towards the beginning? So maybe back to my comment earlier uh, that Rudolf will say, take too long to sign agreements. I, I remember we, we hadn't even had the announcement by the president that we will go into level five lockdown and eventually signed. Um, and, and on the 26th of March, who many of you will remember was the last day that you had the right at that time to visit your offices. I, I still stood there and said, okay, now I've got a signed agreement, but I've got, I've got nothing to show for it. So I definitely questioned, you know, <laughs> was the timing great? But the, 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 the wonderful thing probably about it is that I think almost lockdown definitely confirmed the, the need for something like this because team members were working from home. Uh, once we were allowed to return to our offices and, and in the motor industry, we were lucky uh, that uh, through the industry bodies, we, we got pushed up to level four. So, so we, we were allowed to unlimited staff open early, but you, you know, suddenly we were, we were interacting remotely. We could interact as a team remotely. We could interact with, with treasury one remotely. Mm. We, were, we were lucky that that Motors IT could return to the office and connect up uh, Treasury One to our systems, and that worked quite quite smoothly. I must say, nothing fell over. Uh, and actually, when you when you ask these things within a big organisation where many people are working from home, your immediate fear is: imagine my little request cause some causes something to fall over. But uh, we we navigated that, and uh, the the. The, the, the team started their, their journey during working from home and, and many of them um, have not seen Rudolf and his team uh, since 2019 and, and here we are. So it's, yeah. it's, it's worked out well. That's awesome. You, you said that um, initially when you explored it, there's obviously going to be that little bit of fear or uh, hesitation. Did any of those concerns um, realize or materialize? So the, the, the one that, that, that I thought may is that people will think we, we bring this about as a, as a headcount measure. And I, and I was just quite clear in my communication that it had, had nothing to do with it. I, I wanted the team to use their skills to focus on the anomalies and the out of the ordinary things and rather investigate uh, things that, that they find strange rather than a headcount exercise. So, so no, none of the none of the fears actually materialized, and and, and maybe to the contrary, actually, I, I think once the first person got pushed uh, to to take the leap of faith, and the first story started rolling off at at uh, time saving, you know, the queue to get onto the bandwagon started to to grow, and 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 that was you know it, it almost the success breeded its own success. Okay. In, in the RPA space. 
Yeah, that's that's awesome, Tia. That, that's actually what I wanted to ask next, and you kind of touched on it. I was going to ask about um, getting buy-in from your team and how difficult or easy that was. And you mentioned once the first person jumped on board, it kind of started spreading um, probably more in a positive fashion. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that? Yes, I, 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 I think we, I think we needed a, needed a little bit of luck because we could have probably chosen any process in our organization and, and that one could have stumbled for whatever reason, not because of the, the RPA not working. It's maybe just a, a touch too complex, but we, we selected a few that we thought could work. Um, I think the identification of the low hanging fruits in a, in an exercise like this is, is critical. To, to get those success stories um, rolling off the uh, off the word of mouth of others and and I think the the team's buy-in look in, in my role and I'm, and I'm sure many of those on the webinar today they're merely a catalyst to this we're yeah. not the ones who really deal with with a lot of the detail that that RPA can help you with mm. so uh, luckily my my team are quite young or young at heart. And uh, jumped at the opportunity to to embark on this journey. So uh, I think that was that was probably the biggest success of all is the the the, the buy-in that almost came naturally with uh, with the process. Yeah, that, that's cool. And uh, I, I like what you said there about the the buy-in from the team and the the way that you guys and Rudolf has explained the story to me is that it's been very much um, a collaborative journey. So perhaps you had the initial idea or you wanted to um, explore automation, but I, I would love to hear from you regarding how you got um, your team involved, uh, what sort of questions you asked of them or what processes you asked that they would like to be reviewed or automated. And then just just before you answer, we're going to ask Amanda and Crystal next to see if you're telling the truth, eh? <laughs> oh, fantastic. I, I think they're actually the better placed ones to, to answer the question as they were some of the key members to identify the processes. Uh, I I think I sat down with Amanda once I, you know, made the leap of faith, at least uh, in my own mind, and, and said to her, look, where, where do we see the, the, the processes that, that really – uh, take up our, our team's time where we can better use that time. And, and, and so we started shaping, uh, some of our own ideas. But, but, but I think the collaboration with, with Treasury One and maybe something I should have mentioned earlier, you know, in my role, the natural thing is to think about what are the risks. And I, and I think in, in having a partner that, that you already trust. I mean, we work with Treasury One on, on other parts of our business as well. Process, I think, Almost we confirm which order of, of the processes we wanted to undertake. So it wasn't a here, here, we're going to do the following. I, I think it almost evolved as, as people spoke about it and thought about it um, and debated the, the short term and medium term benefits. Okay, that, that's awesome. J just around that collaboration piece, is that um, a standard Renault or Motors philosophy, or is that something that you hold uh, within your team? So within in Renault, uh, now about two years ago, um, we had adopted a philosophy and rolled that out to our dealer network called Get Closer. And in our mind, Get Closer was everything to do with, from a dealership side, their customer, which is ultimately our customer. And from our side as the, as the importer, our dealer network. Um, so within Renault itself, like in many organizations, one does have silos. But we've used this opportunity to really try and break down those those silos under this whole philosophy of of get closer. But even within Motus, innovation is driven through Motus Exponential. It's a it's a priority uh, led from from the Exco. So it's it's not unique in a certain sense to 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 Renault to embark on on a new journey. I think there's a High degree of entrepreneurial spirit, so even though we are a big corporate, and 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 I think that allows us to to investigate these types of things and see if if it can work and can improve our business. So, yes, we've we've tried it. That's awesome, and it sounds like it's been a, a very successful journey. So, thanks, Kovas. Thank you so much for sharing that with sure. us. Um, I'm going to invite you back onto camera in a moment when we enter into the Q and A. But if I could ask you to turn off your camera for now. 
And Amanda and Crystal, if we could ask you to jump on camera, please. We're playing uh, musical chairs with uh, the camera pods here today. How's it, Amanda and Crystal? Good to have you here. Hi, Joe. Um, I see there's a couple of comments coming into the chats. Uh, if you have lost sound, or if you do lose sound at any moment, oh, I see tomorrow's just put a message there. Thanks, Tam. Okay, great. So, yeah, lovely to have you both here. And similar to um, how we kicked off with Quibus, it would be awesome just to hear uh, a little bit about your roles and responsibilities over at Reno. Um, and then we can jump into some of the, the automation-related questions. So, should we start with you, Amanda? Okay, then. So, I am the GM Finance, as you introduced me. Uh, I manage the finance team, which is the debtors, creditors, and cash management. Okay, cool. Thanks, Amanda. And yourself, Crystal? Oh, you're on mute, Crystal. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, accounts payable, and I report to Amanda. Okay. And a part of my role involves uh, processing of a large volume of invoices. Okay. So I'm going to ask you another question, and you both have to answer very honestly, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so when Corbus came with this um, great idea about uh, introducing automation or RPA at uh, Reno, what, what were your initial thoughts? I'm going to start with you, Crystal, and then I'll come to you, Amanda. Yeah, I was wondering what's going on. Um, yeah. I was insecure, um, thinking, well, hang on, is my job going to be redundant? <laughs> what are the plans? So um, I went to Amanda and I asked her, I said to her, you know, is there anything I should be worried about? Yeah. And she said, um, well, it's, uh, it's only a tool to free up time um, so I can get exposure in other areas of, of my department. Okay. Yeah. That's, that, that sounds like a positive spin on it. That's good. And Amanda, for you? Okay, so the first time I heard of it, Corvus had just been to a webinar. I, I think it was a webinar where he had, uh, where Rudolph had been talking about automation. And then when I heard it, I was first anxious about how my team was going to feel about it. Yeah. As um, yeah. in general, we do know that people usually have a negative um, perception about what automation brings into a business. Yes. So, but yeah. then, as Kubis was explaining, as he said before during this webinar, uh, I get I got to also understand that it's more about um, limiting the amount of repetitive tasks, and also with our growing business, also allowing our team members to also have a bit of extra time to explore uh, the rest of the um, finance department. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um, I know I'm kind of underplaying it and making it um, quite a light topic, but I think there is generally a, a lot of insecurity around automation because people do tend to think that there's going to be um, employees that are going to lose their jobs as a result of it. But I really love the way that uh, Reno has embraced it, where we're automating tasks to free up time to be more intentional, strategic about other purposes. So that's really cool. Um, during that same conversation, either with Corbus or on the webinar, did you already have some ideas or perspectives around what sort of processes uh, could be automated? Like um, we yes. Yeah. No, we did. And Crystal was actually the first person to lead the team in, in having those discussions with Treasury One. Uh, there was a specific process that Crystal and I have had discussions almost every month where where she'd explain to me how long it will take her. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was one of the processes that I had in mind to have to be automated. Okay, awesome. That's cool. Thank you so much. Um, you obviously embarked on this, well, around about March, so it's been, what, going on to seven or eight months now. Um, what, what's been the most interesting or, or surprising aspect of the, the automation that you guys have incorporated? No, oh, Crystal. Okay. So on my side was, was how quick it happened. It was very quick. I, w I was expecting like so delays in the sense of integrating with our IT, our operational system, but it was very quick, very seamless. And I think um, Crystal was running independently with the project um, directly with Treasury One. And I think the one day I was like, so Crystal, how far are you back? And Crystal came back to me and was like, no, we he started already. And I'm like, wow, that was extremely surprising. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, 
I, I knew what we were going to hand over first um, was one of my biggest um, transactional suppliers in terms of, you know, the volume of the invoices. Mm. And um, fortunately, we already had the, um, um, the Excel spreadsheets, if I can be specific like that, in order. But it was so quick. It was so easy. And, and the options available to make a process work, it was, it was comforting. And it was um, exciting to know that, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be so stressed. Um, this is going to be done. And when the first batch of invoices were processed, in the time that it was, I'm like, That's, that this can, this looks like it can work. Yeah. yeah, it was a huge relief to to have all that done in, and so quickly. And obviously, in the beginning, you monitor. Yes. To make sure it's so one batch is done, you check, okay, has it done been done correctly? Okay, yeah. no errors. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um both of you refer to it being a, a very quick process to implement or integrate. But when you say quick or what are the timelines we're talking about? Days, weeks, months. Uh Krista will be more versed in answering that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, this one supplier with the volume, I mean no, I didn't take stock of the of the time. I want to say in a day, um, Treasury One had to um, to train the bot, draw up the bot, um, do the logic, um, so that it can read my my Excel spreadsheets, um, and and the trigger used yeah. that the bot will use to upload. Um, yeah. So when all that was done, you know what, in a month, in fact, if I would say, if not a day, at least a couple of days, but not a week. That's amazing. Wow. It was really quick. And as, yeah. soon as, it, as soon as the first one went, the rest was just automatic. It just ran, ran. Mm. Yeah. That's very cool. So um, as a result of this uh, automation being implemented or integrated, what, what has, has been uh, the most fun aspect? And Crystal, if you say you play more solitaire, we won't judge you. <laughs> Actually, um, yeah, this, I appreciate the fact that um, there was a project that came to being. Yeah. And it was still in its develop, developmental phase. So the fun aspect is not really the automation of itself, but the fact that I had free time to be part of this project while it was in its developmental phase. Okay. Develop, uh, develop, being developed. Um, yeah. And I had the free time and I was able to be involved and insist, uh, assist in the, in the accurate processing of this new project. Um, for me, that was that was the greatest. That was fun, not having to worry about processing, you know, time-consuming, repetitive work. Yes, doing something that's that's a bit out of my mundane. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Um, Crystal and Amanda, the, the, the next question is for you. So obviously with um, the bots that are now running a lot of these sort of processes that may be manual or very time consuming before, what are some of the things that you've been able to incorporate into your, your daily tasks that you now have more time to do that, that you didn't have before? Yeah, so just on my side, as because of the quick processing of the bot, I get my recons quite early from Crystal. So I get to see those a bit earlier on and then I get to focus on other things a bit earlier on before official month end starts for me. So that has been a great help, yes. Okay, cool. And you can tell? Well, I mean, being being made available to, to partake in other areas of my department, getting that kind of stimulation. Um, this whole process, it's... Um, it makes you realize that, you know what, it's a threat, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's workable and it's actually working in, in, in your favor. So I have I have not had as much stress and okay. I have had not to work as much overtime if I can if I can put it that way. Okay. That's good. I've I've got another question for you, but before we do that, I just want to um, introduce another poll here quickly. 
And the question is quite simple. So for those of us who are finance leaders, leading finance teams, or even for, for you individually worried about perhaps your team members, are you worried about the impact of RPA on staff morale? Let's see some of those responses. And Amanda and Crystal, if you click on polls, you'll be able to see the, the dials moving as well. It seems fairly even at the moment. We'll give you about another five seconds or so to complete that. Okay, it's uh, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. Three more seconds, and then we're going to close the poll. All right, perfect. Final responses. Okay, so we can see there 56% uh, of the audience aren't too concerned, with only 43% concerned. And I thought this would be a really cool time to ask both you, Amanda, and Crystal. There's a lot of people who are on the webinar here today that are either thinking about embarking on an RPA journey or an automation journey. And obviously, like you mentioned, Crystal, there, there are those initial sort of insecurities. What does this mean for my job? What does it mean for the longevity of the business or my role? What What are some of your, um, what, what's some advice that you would share with other finance leaders here today around uh, automation and RPA? Well, yes, it is intimidating, um, but don't be scared. I mean, really, it's, it's a tool to help us get through our daily activities, focus more on the on the critical, uh, more like accuracy of your work, um, it does free up, free up time to focus on the accuracy um, and look at um, deviations, you know, be more, um, what's the word? Uh, Kuba said it earlier, uh, the accuracy in, in general. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Just to continue from where Crystal is, um, what Crystal just said is not to fear automation and to embrace all the benefits that come with it and to explore all the different tasks that can be uh, automated. Because what okay. we're also doing on our side is we're also looking, Crystal and I, because we work closely with the other departments, we're also looking on expanding it beyond the finance department as well. Okay, stunning. Yeah, you know, if, if I can add something in there, it reduces human error, um, and it to get through the volume uh, for the motor industry in my in my department specific in my role specifically the volume. Okay, that's awesome. So it sounds like um, we should all embrace RPA and uh, automation. Cool. Thanks, Amanda, and thanks, Crystal. It's, it's always really interesting to hear this, not necessarily from uh, the technical aspect, but from more uh, a practical and hands-on. And I, I really loved what you shared about that initial um, hesitance or uh, feeling a little bit intimidated, and then embracing it and seeing how it's, it's made your lives easier. I think that's a, a great lesson for all of us. So thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts with us today. For those of us who haven't already uh, put any questions into the chat, you're welcome to do so now. We can see that several of those have come through already. So, uh, Rudolf and Corbus, I'm going to invite the two of you back onto camera. And there are several questions here that are quite technical related to Rudolf. So, a lot of these can be uh, addressed towards you. I would also love to hear um, Kobos and Amanda and Crystal's perspective from a, a finance or a, a more practical aspect as well. So let's just kick off with, with some of the initial kind of technical questions um, and then we can move on to some of the others. So let's see here. So Stephen Njanguri um, asked a question in advance and it said, what level of preparedness is required to achieve a successful RPA implementation? I guess we can answer from both perspectives. Yeah, I guess you want to go first, Corbis. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Rolf. Uh, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, uh, Stephen, uh, from my point of view, again, you've, you've, you've heard from, from Amanda and Cristela as well, from, from my point of view, if you think about it, we, we embarked on this during um, early lockdown. So were we ever going to be prepared? Well, I, I think in that time, we, we, we probably weren't going to ever be perfectly prepared. I, I think the, the, the will to do it um, and the understanding that you can take away from this webinar that, you know, uh, um, RPA is, 
is really capable of a number of things and, and it will it, it can fit into whatever your environment is or that's what our experience was because we may even think that you know our system is not uh, the newest or uh, caters for all our needs but but the RPA is slotted in perfectly into that so I don't I don't think there's a there's an exceptional amount of preparedness that that you need I, I think you do need to warn the team as my team have shared with you um, and uh, get them get them on board or get them involved cool thanks Kuba you don't have anything you want to add yeah I mean from our side to, to Kubis's point as well, um, we also insist on a proof of concept or I'm not changing the word now, apparently proof of value, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's just essentially making sure that our software can work on your software. Uh, so we'll take a process, we'll, we'll actually automate it on a either test environment uh, on the client side, just to make, just to double check. But the software is quite flexible. That's why we, you know, we, we actually integrated the software quite easily and it's very stable. But when you do that proof of concept in advance, it just gives us comfort that we will be able to deliver what, what we're promising as well as that uh, and it gives them comfort that our software works with, works with theirs. Um, and then that's also the first one that you bring live. So I guess that's why the, you know, the perception of it being so quickly is because we did actually a lot of work in advance from a technical point of view. Um, that's why it's just a, a replication, like to Crystal's point. You know, the reason why it went so quickly is to process an invoice on a system, we only have to teach the bot that process once. And then the only uh, difference or variable going forward is the way the invoice is laid out uh, that we receive from the vendor. And then it's just a mapping exercise, and that why, that's why it goes so quickly, actually. Okay, awesome. Um, Rudolf, I think I know the answer to this because in some of your earlier slides you spoke about uh, various different APIs and plugins and I see we received some earlier questions about integrations and both uh, Jacques Moller um, and let's see who else asked. There were a couple of other people, uh, Hans van der Heeren, um, he was asking about the integration into various different uh, platforms. Um, yeah, what what are the the challenges around there? And then maybe we can hear from from Reno as well how easy or challenging that was to plug into your existing uh, finance systems. Yeah, I mean, again, the software has been around for fifteen years, so you can imagine from from an RPA point of view, it's set up in such a way that if it cannot talk to a specific application, that means all the clients using that application sort of goes out of range. Um, so that's why it is written in such a way that you can communicate to almost anything. Uh, where you do run into issues is actually badly coded software uh, that's unstable. Uh, that's that's actually the, the worst thing that can happen to us from an automation point of view. And it's only happened, I think, once actually where the software was completely unstable. Um, there's nothing we can uh, we can do about that, but in general, uh, no issues whatsoever. Okay, let's let's see if you're telling the truth. Renault team, was that the case? <laughs> no, Amanda should take a view on this one. Okay, guys. So from our side, um, we started off using with our operating system. It started off on the test uh, on the test um, round. And then, but we had no issues with the communication between um, Treasury One and Motus IT. Uh, okay. Those were done seamlessly and Motus IT did not come back to us to say that, no, there are issues coming through, uh, this won't work or anything like that. So it went pretty well, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, there was another question, and I think this came up in, in one of our previous webinars as well, Rudolf, and I, I think the, well, let me rephrase the question here. Um, it was regarding where to start with um, an automation journey. And if I remember correctly, what you said last time is identify a specific process, work on that process, get that tied up, and then move on to the next one, rather than just trying to automate everything just for the sake of it. Um, uh, yes, I guess the, we, the first one or two that you want to start with is either the highest operational risk that you're trying to remove uh, or the highest volume. Sometimes that's, that's the same one just because the volume <laughs> increases the, the risk. So that's that's where we would start with. And then, yeah. and again, you know, 
once you have that and, and you have the team understand the capabilities, they will come with their ideas. Yes. Uh, it's because then they understand, oh, if it can do this vendor, then it must be able to do this vendor as well. Um, yeah. And that's where this sort of it goes organically from there. But yeah, I mean, it depends organization to organization. Sometimes better to go deep than to go wide. Sometimes, you know, you can go wide, but um, yeah, mm. it, it, it goes from client to client. I think with Reynolds, we went deep and wide at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's been good. I think I think Rudolf's right, uh, John. Uh, you got you got to start somewhere, um, and I think the success story within the organisation, you know, cascades it and and and, and lets it flow uh, by itself. But but at the moment, we we're, we're really trying to almost let our minds go because we can now see all the things it can do. So there's almost in, in our minds now no limit. I hope uh, uh, Rudolf is recording this. <laughs> Uh, because now, now it's a case of processes that, that, that get changed because of other operational requirements. We're saying, okay, but do we really need to have this done by a human or can we, can we automate? So, so we're, we're almost now questioning processes with, with, with a certain lens where in the past it was almost, okay, how and which human is going to do this? So it, 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 it makes you think. Okay. Perfect. There was a pre-question from Edna Atkins, and I think this would be quite quite interesting to everyone, and perhaps um, Christelle and Amanda, something that, that you experience on this journey as well. And she asked around the eligibility of documents. Obviously, um, what you put in is generally what you get out. So errors on, on not necessarily errors on documents, but I mean, if it's scanning PDFs and there's incorrect data, or not even incorrect data, if it's illegible, um, through to fonts or formatting or something like that. How does the bot deal with that? Okay, so um, the current bot that we're using, um, so we have, if it's a pure PDF, it's seamless, but then we do have customers who scan documents in. So with those ones who scan documents in, the solution that we're using with, our, with the bot that we're currently using is, is to almost put in a few of the cells onto Excel, so into an Excel spreadsheet, and just populate that, and then the bot will be able to then read that and put it in the system. It's still a bit quicker than if a, a human would go through and, and process that invoice. Okay, awesome. Crystal, you're on mute. <laughs> You'd think I'd be used to this by now. <laughs> um, when she referred specifically to PDF, um, but if I can refer to my, my self-billing exercises on, on Excel, once the, 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 um, the data is, is set up, it's pretty much, that's just the one source that has to be set up. Um, so for one supplier, it's a one source to set up the address and that number. Okay. So for invoices then coming this month, next month, and so, I mean, it's just automatic then to be processed. Of course, then um, we would send the information to the bot. It's okay. not sent by the supplier to the bot. It, okay. it does go through me, for, well, through, through us first. Um, but the setup process is a one source. Um, I have had instances where I had a, a requested a quick setup because I got a new um, type of invoice to process for, for, for a service provided that um, that was new. And um, like a couple of minutes and was set up. Um, so again, for the supply information, um, that dot. Ah, oh, looks like you froze. Just, just um, just to continue from where Crystal has uh, yeah. was talking about is that another thing that Crystal did mention to me was the consistency that okay. if for if for a specific um for a specific process, if you're consistent in how you then submit the information to the bot, you will not experience any issues. Yes. So okay. consistency is also a very major thing with that. Perfect. Thanks so much, Amanda. I see we are reaching the top of the hour, so I just want to go ahead and ask one more poll. And because it's nearly 12 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, I think Michael Jones will be very upset with me if I don't ask this question. So, Amanda, what's the name of your bot? 
It's, um, that was another fun thing. So when we're trying to do it, we've been trying to name our bots. And yeah. Crystal, who's yeah. just, who's currently experiencing issues, she was the one who had an idea. What was the idea again, Rudolph? I'm really trying to remember. Because <laughs> um, she had this name and we were like, okay, we'll think about it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So yeah, so we still we still trying to to name our bot and find like a name that we'll all agree on. But Crystal okay. has given like one name or two for us to consider. Okay, that's cool. And you, Rudolph, um, what's yeah. the name of your favorite bot? Uh, our bot's called Logan, which is the okay. human name for the Wolverine. So yes, okay. Um, that's the that's the one that does all the processing and the the intelligent one that extracts information from the scan documents called Rachel. So Okay. She's been given a female nap. So we actually have two. Yeah. Awesome. Uh Corbus, any bots that, that you're running on any of your processes? So uh, no uh, about the name, I mean I, I, I had a had something to link it to the French uh of, of Renault, but my team didn't like it, so I withdrew from uh, the naming uh, exercise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So at least now, now you know your place, eh? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Oh, great. I think Crystal has um, rejoined us here. So there are lots of questions that have come into the chat. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share these questions with the Renault team and with you, Rudolph. And let's aim to get some uh, responses back to people as soon as we can. And then I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank our CFO and Finance and Darba Network community for being here this morning. We understand everybody has busy days at the moment. Of course, uh, to Treasure One and Automation Anyway, thank you so much for the ongoing support of the CFO community. You've been massive supporters over the years, including the, the Finance in Darba and uh, these webinar series as well. So thank you so much for that. And uh, thanks to our new friends at Renault. It was fun this morning and uh, good to hear your, your journey around automation. So we've got a couple more webinars coming up. If I can ask everyone just to turn their cameras off, please. And let me make it a bit smaller so we can see the upcoming webinars. There we go. So we can see this was today's webinar. Next week, we'll be hosting a masterclass on assets. Oh, asset-based finance with our friends over at NetBank. So that's one you certainly don't want to miss. And then on the 3rd of December, we have a webinar all around solving your reporting challenges with one of our partners, Enterprise Works, as well. So thank you all for being here today. Thoroughly looking forward to seeing you again on another online session. And we'll be sure to respond to all of your questions. I'm just going to go ahead and type the URL in the chat for those of us who want to register for the other upcoming events. And uh, uh, Amanda, Crystal, Kobus, and Rudolf, thank you for your time this morning. Great to work with you. Thanks, John. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you, day. John. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Thanks, 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 guys. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Thanks, Thanks for care. being here. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Uh -huh. Bye.